Good morning, folks. Yesterday was another double video day. We went over a lot on the magnetic pole shift in both videos, and today we'll look at the cycles again into the past. An unexpected stellar ring, advanced catastrophism for our veteran observers, and of course, we'll be looking at space weather, especially since that faint, sparse component of the CME from three days ago did arrive at Earth earlier this morning. We're first going to watch the last 24 hours on our star in 193 angstroms, coronal holes turning through low latitudes, and we expect enhanced streams to arrive today. Coming to geospace telemetry, we see the CME impact as simultaneous jumps in the solar wind just a couple hours ago. Very weak as expected and only a brief geomagnetic instability, KP4 was produced. Could reach minor storm levels if indeed those coronal hole streams arrive today. We're hitting the length of day, and just a reminder, we've broken the fastest year on record twice in a row, set to break it again this year as the days grow shorter. 2020 and 2021 had the shortest days on record individually, but if it weren't for them, yesterday would have tied the previous record fastest day, and today will spin faster than any day before 2020, breaking the previous record from 2005. Just a couple weeks away from Earth breaking the fastest day on record yet again, overall. And we've got some eye candy up next. ALMA has scoped a young stellar system previously scoped by Hubble, and they expected a face-on circular debris disk, but instead found it highly eccentric, elliptical, and with the star cocked to one side of the oval. Also can see a planet in the ring. Link to the story is below. Folks, in a new paper on abrupt climate disasters, we find several useful charts. This one showing the glacial interglacial cycle of about 100,000 years. Nice nod to the brevity of interglacial peaks like the one we're in now. Back to cold for us very soon. But I found one of the charts here to be excellent in terms of illustrating how different parts of the world take these cycles differently every time. This chart starts at 6,000 years ago, the NOAA event, so we don't see that one. But up next would be Gothenburg geomagnetic excursion and the Younger Dryas at 12,000 years ago. This part of the world got absolutely smacked during the half-cycle Helena Pauli magnetic excursion and Heinrich event, but it did not take too much change in effect at the Lake Mungo geomagnetic excursion, also coinciding with the last glacial maximum 24,000 years ago. 30,000 years ago was another Heinrich event, and before that the dansgaard oschger events look almost as strong as the Heinrich events in 12,000-year cycle geomagnetic excursions. But no matter where you look, the disaster cycle is there, and yes, hitting different parts of the world differently every time. Last but not least, some advanced catastrophism. Folks in the documentary on disaster, in our book The Next End of the World, and in the new supplement, we make a big fuss over binary stars and how often they are simply presumed to be there, and that, in reality, a lot of what they think are eclipsing binaries are actually stellar luminosity changes. Folks, this group is working within mainstream paradigms, meaning they've only got half of the toolbox, and yet they still say two out of the seven binaries they studied may not be binaries, but a star with variable magnetic and luminosity activity. That is a huge win for having to play the game on crutches. We greatly appreciate your support. We say goodbye to our store today, Amazon shutting down their competitor small business selling site. So if you got the PDFs of our books, better download your content quickly. We've got shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.